Hey designers and welcome back. It is time to finally answer all those questions you've sent my way, so stick around. All right, you guys, finally here to do that Q&A for you. Many of you sent in questions last week and I am excited to get to answer them. So let's just go ahead and get to it. Just gonna kind of read down some of the questions. Not sure that I'm gonna be able to get to all of them today in this video. If I don't get to all of them, then you can be sure we will have a part two and we will get to the rest of them very soon. But we had some very interesting questions come in that some of you wanted to know, so. Let's start on with number one. The first question says, Dina, I know you do Dollar Tree hauls and also love nail polishes and nail art. So my question is, do you use the LA Colors or the Sinful Colors nail polishes that are available at the Dollar Tree? Yes, I don't use the Sinful Color polishes, but I do use the LA Colors polishes and definitely love those little polishes. For $1, it is definitely a great deal. So if you're in need of a little polish and you need a color on the go, stop by a Dollar Tree, run in, and for one dollar you can pick you up a little polish and they actually do very well for that dollar. So yes I do. All right, the next question says, since you love matte lipstick and lip gloss, have you tried lip scents? No, actually I have not. I only recently heard about lip scents and I haven't had the time to really check into it to do most research on that to see if it was something that I would be interested in trying or not. But you guys let me know. I, I've heard about it more frequently about the last week or two and have actually seen something on Facebook about it a couple days ago. So apparently it's either something new that's really getting going or I don't know, maybe I'm just new to the game. <laughs> so you guys let me know if you've tried it. Tell me how you like it. Next question, what is your favorite activity to do as a family? That is a really great question. I can only answer it, of course, for me, what I love to do with my family. Not real sure what all of their answers would be. All four of us might would have a different response to that question. But one of my favorite things to do as a family is to take an afternoon or an evening, because you guys know I love to go at nighttime especially, but to just go out to the beach on a quiet afternoon and take a walk together, just walking and talking about life. I love it out there. I love the peacefulness, the quietness, the serenity that's out there. And I love to be able to have heart to hearts with the kiddos. I, I think probably second to that would have to be our late night talks here because there are sometimes you guys know by now if you've been watching over on the vlog channel we are night owls around here and sometimes our best conversations can happen around one or two o'clock in the morning and I just love sitting around spending time hearing the heart of the kids and of my husband so that would have to be as a mom my favorite activities that I love to do with the family all right, next up, do you have any Dollar Tree dinner recipes that you can share with us? Actually, I do not, and I'll tell you why. Our Dollar Tree does not have refrigerated food. <laughs> Our Dollar Tree is in the same little plaza as a Publix supermarket, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Publix actually owns that whole little strip mall, and part of the agreement for Dollar Tree coming in and opening up the store was that they would not bring in the refrigerated slash frozen foods that Dollar Tree typically sells. They do have some stuff like the dry cereals or the chips, candies, and things like that, but there's not enough there to really shop the grocery section and the closest one to me that has a decent refrigerated section is about 45 miles away so in all honesty I have just never really shopped the frozen food section at Dollar Tree a lot there's been a couple of times we picked up a few items that we knew would be okay to last that drive home but haven't done it and just don't have any Dollar Tree recipes that I'd be able to share with you for that reason Next question is, how long did you wear the blue contacts? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm sure you're talking about the avatar that I had on the channel previously to the picture that I have on there now. Actually, those weren't contacts at all. It was a phone app. <laughs> And the kids got a hold of my picture. I think it was my daughter actually who got a hold of that picture was just playing around with it one day and she popped in the blue eyes and I said, oh man, I love it. Send me that picture and let me use it. So they actually weren't contacts. That was all done digitally. Next up. 
How do you keep your beauty, charm, and elegance so well, especially when you're not feeling good? Aw, well thank you so much for that compliment, Miss Pat. I appreciate those kind words. I don't really know how to tell you what, what the response to that would be, honestly. I just, I know that my joy comes from deep within because of my relationship with Jesus. And I think that what you guys see, because the most common comment that I get on any video that I post is that you guys like the upbeat positivity that you see coming through with my disposition and my attitude and what you see on the channel. And that really means a lot to me. Like that is the highest compliment that any of you guys could ever give me is that you see something positive when you visit here. And I have to attribute that to my relationship with the Lord and just being connected with him. And even on the worst days in the worst situations, cause you guys know we have been through a rough four years with everything that we've been doing with our home. I've been through a rough bout with my health and different health issues and the only thing that I can say is that my connection with him and trusting him through through it all and just knowing that okay it's a rough spot but he's in control and there's obviously a reason and a lesson that I can learn in the midst of this is what helps me continue to smile so I think that's what you guys see is just my relationship with him and his love that comes through next up have you ever gone on a missionary trip and have you gone out in the street to minister? Yes. And yes, <laughs> never been on a missionary trip overseas, which that's what a lot of people associate missionary trips with. But our particular church, the Assemblies of God, we do have a home missions department that oversees missionaries, even right here in America. We have our AIM department that works with inner city and outreach right here on our own homeland and, and reaching out to people who are in great need. So I have I've partnered with them. We have done a lot of street ministry. As a matter of fact, at a previous church that my husband and I had done ministry with, that was what we did. We led the street ministry team. And that is my favorite place to be. I have to be honest with you. I love getting out there and mingling with the people, meeting them at their greatest point of need in their darkest, in their darkest moments of life, bringing them hope and letting them know that there is more to life if they can just have the faith enough to believe. I absolutely love it. I really do. That is the favorite, my favorite work I believe that I probably do as far as ministry is concerned and have done it a lot. Spent many hours out there. Never been to a foreign country yet on a foreign missions trip, but I so desperately want to. <laughs> if I ever can save up enough money to go on one of those missions trips, then you can be certain I will be lined up at the door ready to go. Great question. All right, next up. How do you feel about teenagers working a summer job? Do you feel we as parents should make our children work once they get a certain age? Shouldn't they be learning how to support themselves and hold themselves accountable for the little extra things that they like to buy? And also, do you feel that children over 18 should still be given an allowance? Those are some great questions and I'm going to give you my opinion on that just the way that we feel here in our home and obviously this is just our perspective for our family that's going to be different from family to family and that really is a personal choice that each and every family has to make but this is how I see it I think that if kids want to work a summer job and they want to get out there and and get a job where they have a little extra spending money that should be handled very cautiously and I'll tell you why in most places of employment nowadays and, and it even was whenever I was a teenager because I had a job as a teenager as well. Most bosses are not very willing to work with kids around their schedules, whether it be activities with their churches, whether it be even just Sunday church attendance, just going to church, much less the extracurricular things that they tend to do with their youth groups. And also a lot of places are not real amenable to working with them even around their school schedules. And I know you said,
said a summer job, not necessarily a job during the school year, but there are some activities that the kids do if they're involved with the football program, the marching band program, the cheerleading programs. A lot of those programs still do have summer activities and summer practices that they have to do. And my opinion on that is that kids are only kids for a short period of time and they're going to be responsible adults for the rest of their life. And I think that they should be allowed to be kids as long as they possibly can to be able to enjoy life to its fullest. I think that all of you guys out there who are my age, well, even a little younger, a little older, you can think back and remember your time in high school as really one of the greatest time periods of your life and all the memories that you get to make when you're in high school. And I personally hate to see kids have to miss out on that because they have a job. Now, I know that there are some families that are in such a desperate situation financially that the kids have to get a job and help out especially families where maybe there is a single parent and the kids pitch in and help out to bring some income in. And there, there are extenuating circumstances where sometimes kids have to get out there and they have to get that job. Those situations are completely different. I still think they need to be broached carefully and cautiously because of the ramifications that it can have mentally on kids whenever they have to work and be responsible that young. To me, your kids are going to learn the most about responsibility from watching your life, not just because they have a job. And I know that, you know, some from the older generations see things completely different from that. And their philosophy always was, we got to get them working, get them working young, teach them responsibility. But you can teach your kids responsibility in so many other ways. Let's just take the sports example. When, when your kid commits to a sports team and they have to be at the games, they have to be at practices, they can't just skip out because something else more fun has come along or they're tired today so they don't want to show up to practice. All of that is still teaching your kids that aspect of personal responsibility, taking responsibility for the commitments that you've made. They don't have to have a job to learn that. Second of all, by watching your life and watching your work ethic and watching how you handle responsibilities with paying your bills on time, making sure that everything is taken care of as far as that's concerned, making sure that they watch you live by a budget and handle your finances properly, your kids are going to learn way more from watching you than by just going out and getting a job. Because what happens, most teenagers that go out and get a job, their parents give them the freedom to do whatever they want to with their money. They're not really using that as a teaching tool to show them responsibility with their finances. And most teenagers, because trust me, we've worked with teenagers a long time, <laughs> and we were teenagers, both of us had jobs as teenagers, and this is what we've discovered. Most teenagers take that cash when they get that paycheck and they cash it out and they just go spend it away on whatever they want to, whether it's, you know, on the weekend going out with their friends, heading off to the beach to spend a whole Saturday and they're just spending money like crazy. Things like that, going out shopping, buying clothes, buying shoes, staying in with all the latest fads. A lot of teenagers who want to get a job want to do so, so they have extra spending money on frivolous pleasures like that. And technically nothing wrong with that, but it totally alleviates the argument that you're teaching them responsibility because that's not teaching them responsibility. It's just providing a way that they can get all the wants and desires by having a job. And it gives them the false expectation that when they get older and have a job, they'll be able to get whatever they want because they have not learned to budget. So that's just kind of how I see all that. What I see from a youth pastor's perspective is this. There have been a lot of church activities that we have scheduled with our kids. And, and I'm not just talking about the fun things like a night out bowling or going play in mini golf or different fun activities. I'm talking about deeply spiritual conferences or weekends away where we have seminars where we really drive home the teaching aspect, the mentoring and discipleship aspect of the faith that our teenagers haven't been able to be a part of because they've had jobs that they've had to work. And for a youth pastor, most of our activities we schedule during the summer because that's when the kids are out of school. We don't have to worry about them getting home early to go to bed early, to get up early for school. You know, we have a little more leeway with time constraints and all that kind of stuff. And so a lot of the major activities that youth pastors 
teachers plan for their students happen during the summer. So when these kids go out and they get those summer jobs, mostly for just spending money to go spend on more clothes, more shoes and stuff like that, then we see a decrease in their spiritual walk because it takes them away from what we feel like is the most important basis that they can have while they're still teenagers to really get that good foundation as far as faith is concerned before they're thrust into college, having to work and having all these responsibilities that are on them. It's kind of like the old example, a, a home is only going to stand and be as stable as the foundation on which it's built on. We can even use that in a beauty thing because I know a lot of you that follow the channel love beauty and makeup and lipsticks and all that kind of stuff. We can even apply it towards that. You can have the most expensive blush, highlighter, contour, eyeshadows, you can have it all. But if your foundation is a cheap, cheap drugstore foundation that breaks down within an hour <laughs> once you put it on your face, then it doesn't matter how expensive all the other stuff is. And that's the way we feel with teenagers, that their foundation has to be solid before they hit the responsibility of adulthood and there are so many other ways to teach them how to be responsible and to teach them my kids have learned a great work ethic from the things that they help us do around the church setting up for conferences tearing down afterwards cleaning the church making sure that all of that is in order and in place for every service and and all the responsibilities that have come even just with that you know they don't have to go out and get a job that pays them a paycheck to be able to teach those kind of things. So our opinion on that is obviously it's a very personal choice with each family. Everybody's going to have a different viewpoint and a different opinion on that. We just strongly caution parents to make sure that you are approaching that matter with prayer and with your eyes wide open because when it's all said and done at the end of it, when you're about 25, 26 years old and you're looking back at your teenage years, most of us regret that we took those summer jobs or those evening jobs while we were still in school because there was so much that we missed out on that we'll never have the opportunity to recapture again. And I just feel like kids need to be able to be kids while they still can because when the full brunt of responsibility of adulthood comes, there's not always a chance to go back and capture that. So that's just kind of how we feel about it here. Be very careful with it. If your kids are going to get a job that's going to take them out of church attendance, going to take them out of activities with their youth group and things that can really affect them spiritually, then you probably want to take a second glance before you just allow them to get that because we have seen too many kids walk away from God altogether and begin skipping out on church altogether because what that does is it teaches them that jobs are more important, that money is more important, and that pursuing the finer things of life are more important than developing a relationship with God. I'd rather die poor and go to my grave having nothing materialistically, yet having a solid foundation and relationship with Christ, than I would to go to my grave with no relationship with Christ and all the things that this world could give me. So that's just kind of something to weigh and kind of how we feel about that. So that's that's a great question, a really great question. All right, we got time for one more. And I know I didn't get to all of them. Like I said, I will do a part two and we will come back and answer some more of the questions because you guys have asked some great questions. There was one on here that I did see about homeschooling. I do have already about four, I think there are four videos that explain all about the homeschooling, why we chose it, how we do it, how the kids feel about it. The kids shared their heart about it as well. I'm gonna have all those linked for you down below. So the question that came in about homeschooling, you'll definitely want to watch those videos because it's going to give you a lot of details about it but I'll go ahead and finish up with this last one it says how do you like living in Florida what are your favorite things to do for fun and our mobile home looks bigger than this person's home does so she wants to know if it is a triple wide so great questions no it's not a triple wide our home is only 28 feet wide it's 28 by 60 so 
pretty average size mobile home, not very big at all. And actually, the more you live here, the smaller it feels, to be quite honest with you. So not a triple wide there. Some of the things that we like to do for fun is we love to spend a lot of time together as a family, just doing all kinds of different things, whether it's shopping, heading off to the beach, whether it is going to one of the amusement parks around here, whatever it is. If we're together as a family, we really, really love to do that. Bub loves to go fishing with his dad and hiking through the woods. Me and baby girl love to spend some time shopping and finding pretty shoes and pretty earrings and those kind of things. But I would have to say family. Anything that we can do together as a family is our favorite things to do. And how do we like living in Florida? Absolutely love it. I would not want to live anywhere else and hope that I never have to live anywhere else than right here because it really is a little bit of heaven right here on earth. So these were some great questions, you guys. Thank you so much for submitting them. Like I said, I know that there's some that I didn't get to. And if your question was one of them that I didn't get to, hang on because we will do a part two in a couple of weeks and we will get those posted on the channel as well so that hopefully everybody can have your questions answered. If for some reason you missed that call for questions and you have a question, and you want to ask me, go ahead and post it down below on this video and I will incorporate it in that second part for you so that we can answer everything you wanted to know about us here at Divide Design. I want to thank all of you so very much for tuning in and hearing a little bit more about us. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button too so that you don't miss part two when it comes out. Again, I want to thank you so very much and I want to remind you that you were created for purpose. So go and be all you can be. I'll see you soon in the next video.